Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and today we're going to go ahead and do the popular request that I'm constantly asked is, how do you put together a water cooling loop? So since I had to drain mine, pull all the water out of it, I decided to go ahead and take all the parts out of the machine, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what you need to know when it comes to building a water cooling loop. When building a custom loop, there are specific parts that are required to complete the system. Of course, you're gonna to have to have a uh, block for your CPU. This is what's gonna transfer the heat into the water. You're gonna to have to have a pump. This right here is a uh, MCP-655, uh, I believe, I don't remember the actual number of it. Yeah, MCP-655 from SwiftTech. It's a variable speed. It's a very high pressure pump. Uh, you don't need to go this extreme, but you obviously do have to have a pump. You have to have a radiator. You have to have a way to dissipate that heat. You have to have a reservoir to hold the, have a place to fill the coolant, have a place to hold the coolant. And of course, you have to have uh, the tubing, which I already have connected here because I'm not gonna redo it all. And of course, you have to have a fan. Uh, you have to have fans for your radiator. One of the most common things that I am asked is how big should your radiator be? Well, that really depends on how many pieces that you're gonna be cooling inside your water cooling kit. You could cool as much as just the CPU, or you could cool the CPU, the MOSFETs, the motherboard, the North Bridge if you're running AMD, you can run your graphics card, multiple graphics cards, RAM. There are so many ways that you could build this custom loop. The size of your radiator and how many radiators really depends on what it is you're planning on cooling. So if you're going with the bare minimum, like a CPU, you can get away with even just a single 120 millimeter radiator, which is half of this. This is a 240 radiator, which is two 120 millimeter fans. For my loop, however, I am also including the water cooling for my GTX 680 here. Uh, so that includes the price, or you have to include a graphics card water block. In my case, I'm using a full cover water block, which means that I'm adding a lot more heat to my system because graphics cards tend to get much hotter than CPUs. So I included another triple SwiftTech radiator right here. So let's go ahead and take these parts, let's put them together in the PC and show you guys exactly what you need to do to take it from part to loop. When it comes to applying the thermal paste, you want to apply it directly to the CPU heat spreader. There's a lot of different opinions and, and ideas going around about the proper way to install thermal paste. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. I tend to just take and put a few dots evenly spread out on the top of the heat spreader. And then just take a business card or a credit card and you can use it to just evenly smear and apply the thermal paste. And I know somebody watching this video is going to be like, That's not the proper way to put on thermal paste! Well, you can eat me. This is the way I've been doing it for years. And I've never once had a problem. But the thermal paste, all it does is fill any gaps between the, the two metals as they touch. And it, it promotes uh, heat exchange between the block and the CPU. And what you want to do when you're installing the block, and this is true for any sort of heat sink or water block, is you want to get two opposing corners started, and you just want to get these just slightly tight. And you want to work in a star pattern, just like a heat sink. You don't want to tighten down in a circular motion, because then what you'll do is you'll create uh, a bulge in the center, and you'll have a gap. Uh, and it won't make very good contact, which can lead to overheating. Okay, so once we got the CPU block installed, uh, go ahead and recommend uh, installing your radiator. The radiator is kind of the most bulky part to work with here. So keep it uh, firm in one hand, and we're going to keep this very, very clean, people. Get your mind out of the gutter. And then I would just keep in your other hand one screw ready so that you can get it hand tight to hold the radiator in place.
just a point I want to make when it comes to routing your tubing here. My tubing was pretty much already all cut and ready to go because I removed it from a working system. But what you want to be mindful of is how tight of a bend you put on the tube. The tubing is very flexible, especially if you go with a tube designed for water cooling from a reputable source like frozen CPU or performance PCs. It's very, very flexible. However, if you get to a certain point, you're going to get a kink in it. So you have two options. You can get an anti-kink coil, which is just like a, a spiral piece of plastic that goes over the tube. I think it looks really tacky. I don't like using uh, anti-kink coils. The other thing you could also do is just plan really, really well. So for instance, I changed up the way my loop is routed here just slightly. And so when going from the CPU block to the GPU, uh, it was putting, as you can see right here, how it flattens out a little bit. This is flattening out, which is reducing the water flow. So all I need to do to fix that is just put the tube next to the barb on where I think it needs to be, and then just slowly cut off about quarter inch increments of the tube and test fit until it's no longer kinking and then just leave it at that. So you want to plan ahead when it comes to your tubing, you want to do some, uh, some test fits. It doesn't really matter what order that you run the components in. The most important part is that you have your pump being fed directly by your reservoir. You want your pump pulling in from the reservoir and you want your pump to be lower than the level of your reservoir because you want gravity to feed into the pump. We'll talk more about that when it comes time to fill and prime the system, but uh, it doesn't really matter. As long as the reservoir goes before the pump, the pump can go out to the graphics card, then to a radiator, then to the block, then to the other radiator, or in your case, just block and radiator, and it's fine. Now I'm getting your hand. Drop your wrist. A bit more. Break my arm, will I? <laughs> if you just break your arm off, it's sort of in the way. In order to mount your reservoir, you might have to drill some custom holes. In my case for the reservoir, it has an L bracket, and I had to drill a hole under the bottom here to mount this down. And the loop is now back together. Just that easy. So I've got to go ahead and put some of these clamps back in place. But, I mean guys, that's it. So here's the order of my loop. This is the way that I run my loop here. I go from reservoir to pump, to upper radiator, to the CPU, directly to the GPU, then to the lower radiator, back to the reservoir. So that's my loop. 